I'm excited to present to you our program of studies here at BMR. Our vision here at BMR is to provide relationships, realization, rigor, and relevance to all of our students. Students have the unique opportunity to create a more personalized program of study based on their interests and abilities. The offerings you will find have been well-defined and structured to meet all of our students. While exploring your academic interests, I encourage you to explore our co-curricular offerings. Many of our students participate in athletics, music, fine arts, and dozens of activities that would help develop well-rounded students. Many of our electives have been developed to create a more personalized and engaging atmosphere, cultivating students' interests, strengths, and abilities. You'll see that we have various offerings in all subjects. Some of course offerings include AP level courses in math, English, and science, as well as multicultural literature, personal finance, video production, ceramics, forensics, literature through performance, robotics, band, American popular music, and so on. Our goal is to create an atmosphere that supports and challenges all of our students. We want all of our students to maximize their opportunity here at Blackstone Millville. Through the course selection process, please find courses that will challenge and engage you. I want you to truly discover yourself and find your purpose and desires. It starts with uh, some of the earliest writings from England and then works its way up to modern English. Kind of gives us the roots from which our own literature come from. People really haven't changed that much over that over thousands of years. Pride and honor and revenge and jealousy. These emotions that people still feel today. And no, don't hold your hands up. It's a frame story. A lot of it's told in flashbacks, so it does take a. It's a little bit uncomfortable to get into the first person. Mm -hmm. It was difficult to tell when the narrator, like exactly when the narrator switched some letters, and then he starts reading the letters. He's to bed, in the room. So, just in anatomy class, we learn about like the body and how functions move, mind and brain. PowerPoints, we do a couple of papers, short papers, and learning about different diseases. Exploring and figuring out how the body works. If you're looking at someone's eye, you only see the outside of it, but if you're dissecting an eye, you're seeing all the components within it. This, this is our neurons. We did this project on recycled materials. This is the axon, and this is the axon terminal lens. When I think about AP Calculus, I think the reason um, I would take it if I was a high school student and I enjoyed math and I feel like I'm pretty strong in math, number one, it gives you a great foundation um, going into college. It ties in all the things that they've done in algebra and geometry and pre-calc and it sort of ties in all the concepts so that they finally sort of make sense in a certain way. We sort of keep going at a pretty rapid pace, but then we come back to things. So everything sort of keeps wrapping back and connecting. Um, and when we do homework, uh, it's not just for the sake of doing homework, it's, there's, there's an application there. And rather than standing up in the front of the room and just going over 20 or 30 problems, I give them a chance to get together, compare answers, you know, and then ask, or help each other out and what do you want to talk about as a class. I don't feel bad about having to write because I actually get to write about fun stuff instead of just, you know, why did World War start? Yeah, I guess being able to express yourself through your writing. You have room to just kind of do whatever you want with the project. It's not like one defined thing. We basically had to pick a picture and like describe like uh, like the person we were and like if we changed and like the effects and things that happened to us about it. Shakes um, Shakespearean insults, that was a fun day just coming up with different things. <laughs> we read this play and at the end of the play there, the, there's a, they, they had to write a speech from the point of view of a character. It was involving getting up and talking in front of, in, in talking in front of the class and which is something that is a really good skill of practice. Supportive of each other, like we don't like tear down, we like give positive feedback. Enhance your creativity as you get more ideas from other people. You have to like bring something to the table, like start a discussion, like bounce ideas off of each other. Creative. 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 
It's a lot about public speaking, which is something I'm interested in. And it teaches you a lot about like making a good argument. I heard that it was a small class, so it made me feel better that like the teacher could really focus on us as individuals. I try to not to talk as much and have just give the students a chance to voice their ideas, what they think, what stood out to them. Because she talks about how she has to like always clarify that she's like a female, almost like a disclaimer. It's improved my writing a lot. We do um, writing exercises about once a week and it really it does improve your writing and gets you ready for college. It's advanced placement, so at the end of the class you take a test. As with most AP courses, you can skip a elective credit in college if you pass the test. Which helps to bring down the cost of college. It's a fun class, yes. This class is good. Yeah, it's a great class. This class is fun. <laughs> Goals are to help students develop proficiency in all four skills, listening, speaking, writing, and reading. The goal really is for our students to have an enjoyable experience in foreign language while learning about new cultures. Je suis Juliette. Alice. Je m'appelle Catherine. Je m'appelle Nicolas. Buy a lot of flashcards. Go over all your flashcards, your notes. Ça va ça va I love practicing. I don't like any other worksheets other than French. My favorite part is definitely speaking it out loud yeah. and being able yeah. to. Je te présente Petit Nicolas. Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour. Bon chance, au revoir. Choisissez le français. <laughs>I think band helps me in the classroom because it's kind of like um, learning how to speak a different language. You're speaking the language of music and it helps you when you're speaking other languages in the classroom. So memorizing all your music helps you when it comes to say English, memorizing vocab terms, or Spanish, memorizing vocab terms. It's taught me how to manage my time better and get things done. I myself am naturally a procrastinator, but band keeps me on track with everything, forces me to get things done. Band is giving me a work ethic, so like, I don't procrastinate as much as I normally would. So I manage my time better and um, I have more to do during the day so I know when I have to do my homework. Band has definitely helped my grades, absolutely. It kind of motivates you academically as well as musically, so you become better musically, but then you also discover strategies to improve yourself academically. When you're playing music, you need to keep focused and you need to be like, basically translating everything, that translation actually helps your brain become smarter. Being in band is definitely going to help my future because I've learned a sense of pride for what I do and I've met so many new people. In organizations and experiences in itself, band has really helped me grow as a person. We start with logos and branding and advertising, how it affects us as consumers and the design process to get to a finished logo. And we're talking about color theory, we're talking about using shapes and Photoshop and typography together to create brand awareness. Uh, the history of design, the history of fonts and typefaces. Someone tell me or point out one difference between the typography here and in the new version. It's more colorful. More colorful, they've added a pop of color. <laughs> what kind of font? There's the two main groups of fonts we talk about. And these are showcasing one of each. Serif is on the left and sans serif is on the right. Exactly. It's a cleaner looking font. The lines are cleaner without the tabs, right? They got rid of all that in the new logo. The new trend is flat. Everything is becoming flat. We use Adobe Photoshop, um, CS6. Have the option of using Illustrator as well. We do as many projects as we can. 10 to 12 portfolio. Pieces we'll finish, a few quizzes, and a few research projects thrown in. Basically, uh, street law is about a, kind of an introduction to law, uh, in which we look at the Bill of Rights uh, to start off with, and then we start looking at crimes, the judicial system, uh, and then we look at a lot of famous cases, includes uh, mass murderers, famous cases. Uh, like uh, back there, we got to decide if OJ was guilty or not guilty. Important cases like O.J. Simpson, Rodney King. Right now we're working on cases to decide whether we should charge people as a juvenile or as a criminal. 
Good. Case studies in which they do individual uh, research. We watch videos. Yeah, we always watch um, CSI to get a good understanding of the whole concept. I have to know about my rights and stuff and how to defend myself. If you want to learn about your laws and your rights, then this is like, this is the course to take. I would highly recommend this course there. Even if you don't want to go into criminal justice. Well, we're in engineering and technology. What we're doing right now is like we're building small CO2 race cars. Uh, the course is basically architectural, mechanical engineering, civil engineering, basically all types of engineering. So they've taken the plan, they've drawn it on AutoCAD, now they're taking what they drew and making it like a full live prototype. I like when we get in the workshop and we're able to work with our hands and actually make our product. Innovate on a product, they would invent the product, an alarm clock where they would have to get up across the room, heated ice cream scooper. It was fun projects like that. Then they jumped into architecture where they got to design their own style house. We got to uh, design a house and we got to design it and put, uh, put in all the rooms. And they worked in groups to do so. So that way I set up a cul-de-sac and they had a plot of land, they had to buy it, then they had to build the house on it and tell me how much it was worth at the end. This class is a little bit about like pre-engineering. The, the tower's the first one, and then we're gonna have uh, like a bridge. Um, CO2 cars, like a catapult. We are building a balsa wood tower. So I gave them a uh, kind of a outline from Science Olympiad. So the tower has to be 50 centimeters high. It has to fit over a hole in the table that is 20 centimeters square. And then at the top of the tower, it has to be five centimeters square. All right, we're in a competition with a little weight. We have to hold the weight with the tower. We connect it to a bucket with a piece of string, and then you fill the bucket with sand and see how much weight it can hold. So it simulates a, kind of a skyscraper and how you build that with the internal structure. See this, see this double strength right here? It's giving us strength. Four of these put together, tower shape. It's like the Empire State Building. Basically, in this class, you can come in with absolutely no skills whatsoever. Something you can learn from scratch and still be successful at. We don't really have a strategy. We just want to be able to hold something and not collapse without making any kind of a showing. Our tower, the Just Good Enough Tower. It starts with probably food safety, some nutrition, um, which really supports what students learn in health and wellness. Safe use of appliances, knife skills, recipes would be fruits, veggies, um, quick breads, yeast breads, pasta, um, whole grains. Of course we'll do some cookies and some baking. I'd say students like pizza, they like cinnamon rolls, um, actually happily they like a lot of the soups, chilies. Um, basically the kids like to eat pretty much anything. Uh, we have microwaves, the stove, KitchenAid mixers, blenders, food processors, some, you know, a decent set of knives, quite a set of bakeware as well as cookware. Also, uh, sometimes we do have guest speakers. We have had a chef from Johnson & Wales. We have another chef from Lincoln Culinary Institute. So if you like to eat, you like to be out of your seat, active, working with your friends, then I'd say you should take foods and nutrition. Um, in Foundations in Art, it's a little bit of everything, so it's a nice little walk through all the different types of art that I can think of. A little painting, a little bit of drawing, a little ceramics, um, so they get a little bit of a color foundation and how to make art. You get to do like all the different aspects of art, not just one thing. Like painting, uh, charcoal, pen and ink, uh, we do watercolor, so that's pretty fun. Um, this is a good class if you're not sure what type of art you want to take and you haven't taken any art, so you can get your feet wet, learn a little bit about art, a little bit about different types of art, and then go from there. The students really love it because um, if you don't like a particular type of art, in a couple weeks you're on to the new thing so it's fast paced and you can't get really get bored. Everybody has great things to say about this class, it's one of my more fun classes because it's so many different things so if you're going to pick an art class, it's the one to start with. 
make t-shirts, we make posters. The project they're making now is they're replicating Monopoly, but they're actually theming it to what they want. It's called BMRopoly, a lot do BMR, but uh, others will do other themes. One's doing Disney princesses, another's doing anatomy. And if you go around, one person's making the board, another person's making, it's, you make all the paper products. One person makes the board, one person makes the property cards, the chance cards, and then the money. We have a BMR theme, so we have all the teachers going around it as the uh, places. I mean, the whole class is problem solving. Um, I'm teaching, they don't know it, but I'm actually teaching the size of paper in here and also engineering. Leadership in environmental engineering and design. I think it's fun because you can work with your hands. So these right here are recycle bins that we're making to go around the barrels in school um, to kind of neaten it up, make it look better. Perfect. These are going to be on the side of all the trash cans. So we're going to put recycle, like a recycle sign in the middle, and then it's going to say thank you. Probably build um, small greenhouses. We're probably going to do an experiment with a solar cooker. Yeah, it's, it's nice to get out of the classroom, just like sitting around all day. So basically what we do in this class is we build VEX robots and then we build them for a competition. VEX, which is a brand of robot that you can go and compete worldwide with. So then after that we go and compete in this year's game, which is we have to take large beach balls and small lucky balls they're called. And we have to get them to each end into like goal posts and stuff. So basically we design a robot that will do that efficiently and make it through the obstacles that are provided. Anything from computer programming to building to turning a wrench like Brenda said, um, all those are put together to make a robot and compete with it. Its arms hinge right here, which is different than our old design. And what's going to happen is we're going to mount a hopper right here, which is going to intake the ball so it can carry it around and then we can get them in the goal. I actually randomly got put in this course, but I'm really happy I stayed in it because it's really fun and it's cool and there's a lot of cool people and we have a good time. VHS stands for Virtual High School, which means that um, it's an online class opportunity that we just don't offer here. Um, VHS is a completely separate system just from your school system. It's an online corporation. So you sign up for a certain class and then they give you your online registration, username, things like that. And then the weekly schedule is from Wednesday morning until midnight on Tuesday night and that's how long you have to get all of your work done. Your teachers send you lessons online and you get notes and everything online, discussions, and then um, you just submit all of your assignments on a Dropbox. I'm currently taking animal behavior and zoology but before my sophomore year, I did take a AP Biology class. Yeah, there's, there's right about uh, 20 other students taking VHS online, and the classes range from, I know some people are taking AP Economics, to my friend Jen is taking Astronomy. Um, other people take elementary basic courses, and during their block period, they actually get to drive down to the elementary school and work with the students. So it is kind of a mixture of online on the internet and a hands-on thing. Basically, it's just for the good experience, and you uh, you can write it on your college application. You can say, "Oh, I did this, and I did this, and that looks great." Um, most students come into this class with no experience with video, um, so we start right from the beginning. And within about a month, month and a half, students are filming their own segments. Two months, they'll be creating their own news segments to be aired on the school news. We work with the green screen interview. Um, projects, short documentary type projects, do class profiles, some miscellaneous comedic sketches. One project we're working on now is doing an interview for the uh, Drama Club, which is doing Alice in Wonderland, and we're, and we're also going to include some actual clips from Alice in Wonderland into the interview. Really, like, you have to use your imagination for this class to like come up with props and stuff, and like the BMR news and stuff. You just have to basically just have a good time, be creative. Pre-production day would be students coming in, uh, filling out a proposal sheet, 
coming up with a story idea. They get the permissions they need from other people they'll be filming. They list the equipment they'll take um, and that they'll need, the locations they'll be at, and then they go off and film. A typical production day, students will come in and after having their proposal signed off, will grab the equipment they need, camera, tripod, microphone, any accessories they need, head out into the school to film their project. Editing, I took, I'm taking that away from this class. And I'm, take, and I'm also taking away how to properly use a camera without breaking it into a million pieces.